face please please do so we can just see the joy the one of the one of the names of Sukkot so this holiday that we're celebrating is Man Simchotenu is just like the time of our joy mm-hmm. and that joy is what opens up the opens up the heavens mm-hmm. and uh, we would usually be presuming to you from our sukkah <laughs> but it was raining. It's yeah, raining. It raining, and like the first rains, it was like summertime the, until Tuesday. Yeah, it was the first rains, <laughs> and the first rains, and this is really—it's so <clears throat> traditional. The sky is being so traditional, raining on us today, and and we just got treated to a, a giant oh, double rainbow. Double. Wow! 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 So that was that was a sign for sure, a sign of the covenant. Mm. Uh, so we're, you know, we're all ready. Yes. <laughs> they are. Um, so this, uh, we are um, at the place of being um, the end, the end of the Song of Songs, and then next week will be the beginning again. Um, and you know, so. I, I wrote this this uh, this little piece that says happily ever after, happily because it, because it's the end of the the end of the song of songs like, you know shouldn't it be happily ever after, and so well, no, no. So the song of songs is our great love story. As with all great stories, you might wonder, well, how does it end? So I grew up with the with a bedtime story, a myth, a blueprint for how love was supposed to go, where we're supposed to take me, that can sum, be summed up with the words, and they lived happily ever after. The last note says, ta-da, <laughs> the end. And I've always been a sucker 
for those romantic comedies that warm my heart and lure me with their fantasies of happily ever after. The Song of Songs ends on such a different note. The lover turns to her beloved in the garden and says, Go, hurry, my beloved, flee, be my gazelle, my young stag on the mountain of spices. Mm -hmm. She turns to love, reality, God, the vastness of being and says, I will not domesticate you with my concepts. I will not limit you with my convenient definitions. I will not settle for comfort and ease and a small, predictable reality. Because I have glimpsed your vastness, your wild immensity, your unfathomable nature. So I live uh, at the edge of wilderness, and I'm always playing at that edge. I have a small container garden on my porch, a hummingbird feeder, and a seed block for the woodpeckers, jays, juncos, grosbeaks, and finches that I count as family. A grateful tribe of chipmunks live under my wooden planter boxes. Bears sometimes lumber onto my porch to do their mischief. And the seeds from my chives, flowers, waft off my porch into the ground that surrounds my house, taking root as tufts of delicious food for the deer that wander by. The other day, I stood on my porch and stared into the dark eyes of a doe who was leading her two young children into those between lands where my chives had spread. For a long, timeless moment, we were lost in each other's eyes. And then quite suddenly, she must have heard those words, hurry, flee, <laughs> be like a gazelle in your swiftness and wild beauty, run to the mountain of spices. I was so grateful for those moments and sad to see her go and happy for her wildness, for in those precious moments, she awakened the wild in me. And this is also how the Song of Songs ends, leaving us playing at the edge between our civilized, predictable, constructed, comfort-seeking world and the vast, dangerous mystery that can't be contained, defined, or even fathomed. So I want to say that just about an hour ago, I, there were th three deer that came up to the front to the front porch, <laughs> and they said, "Oh, are we are we going to be in the kazoom tonight? You're going to talk about yes, us? Yes, you're going to talk about us." <laughs> so, so this uh, I call this um, this kazoom a wild god. Because, you know, all of the Song of Songs is about our relationship to God, the great mystery. And um, to, to be able to end on that note of wildness really, you know, kind of changes m what my relationship is to that, to that mystery. And um, there is a way that my relationship with God as the wild God also kind of gets mirrored in my relationship to um, to you, to you, to you, and especially to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that, uh, and that, you know, that the meaning of love, instead of, be, of saying, oh, I'm acquiring you, it's I am, you know, I'm, I'm setting you free, I'm sending you to your mystery, to your vastness. And it's a, a kind of a different model of, of love. So, um, so I want to chant this with you as our practice of, uh, of uh, kind of being in relationship with the, with the beloved and a relationship 
that says, I can't, I, I'm not going to contain you, I'm not going to own you, I'm not going to conceptualize you, uh, I am going to, um, to send you to who you, um, you are, and, and in doing so, you send me, too. So, um, so um, imagine that gesture inside you that says go, go. Um, and so I take the first two words and the last three words of the last line of the Song of Songs to say, hurry, my beloved. So um, take a moment first just to close your eyes and feel yourself at the edge, at the edge of what you know. Oh, 
I was reading by Parker Palmer. Uh, he was talking about the way that religions go wrong in really trying to kind of own own the truth in some way. And uh, so he says, uh, when people of any tradition insist that the treasure cannot be carried except in their earthen vessels, they commit idolatry. And sometimes people die. Idolatry is the driver behind all religious violence. Why do we do it? Because we are afraid, afraid of how we'd have to change if we freed the sacred from our creedal cages and released it back into the wild. Of course, we could never confine the sacred, but the delusion that we can dies hard. <laughs> I once heard an old Celtic, Celtic. Celtic Christian story about a monk who died and was interred in the monastery wall. Three days later, the community heard noises inside the crypt so they removed the stone and found their brother resurrected. Awash in wonder, they asked him what heaven was like. Well, he said, it's nothing at all like the way our theology says it is. Without further ado, they put him back in the wall and sealed the crypt again. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was that was a great story. We don't want that much change. <laughs> <laughs> but that sense of like that sense of danger, like oh, the danger of of uh, of not of not knowing, of being open to be surprised, you know. Uh, we, we, uh, you know and so entering into this relationship with the beloved, the core practice is what's called devekut. And devekut um, is how I connect with the oneness, um, with God, with reality, how, I, how that connection happens. And um, so I, I wanted, you know, I, I was looking at this phrase from Psalm 63, um, and it seemed to me it was showing me two uh, different approaches to Devikut. And you can take a look at that, at that, at that text. And the first part of it says, Dafka nafshi echarecha. And it's kind of like saying, it's kind of like this expansive kind of um, gesture of like going after that one, that one, that, you know, you know, going after, you know, I, it's like my soul with love goes after you. It's like I'm expanding into that vastness. And then the second part of the phrase says, be tamcha yemanecha, yemanecha. And which means, well, your strong hand supports me. And, uh, and what that suggests is that God is here, and all I need to do is lean back and into those that into that embrace. So there's a place in me that kind of goes after the mystery, you know, just like flies out into the vastness, 
and then there's another another place in me that knows mm. you know oh there's another way to, <coughs> of de of connection because i am already connected i need to just lean back allow myself to be hold, held rest into that connection and it's not like one of them is more true than the other but i um it's a dance it's a the, you know mm, the dance yeah. of de right. they, the dance both back. of them and so um so I want to chant this <coughs> with you and 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 Rachmel and I will do it as a round at, at some point. Certainly. <laughs> uh, and you can choose which, whoever you want to chant with. Um, but the <coughs> sense of like my, my, of my soul. So the first part of it says, Nafka, Nafshi, Achadecha, Nafka, Nafshi, Achadecha. And then the second, the second part of it is that leaning back into that sense of being uh, supported, feeling, feeling that divine embrace holding us. So see if we can just go, we'll go back and forth and feel both of those those impulses in you of connecting with the God of that vast wilderness and the God that is holding us.
and uh, to feel first that sense of going out into the vastness of reality going after this um, kind of a great expanse so expanding like that we're part of that expanding universe reaching out to the beloved in this you know, in the widest, widest way. And just breathe into that feeling or that impulse inside you to, to reach out, to go after with great love. Going after that wild God. Just notice what it feels like in your center when you're when you're expanding in that way. And you're becoming that spacious, loving awareness of the whole. And now let's just shift and feel like, oh, oh, that connection is right here. And feel in your body that sense of leaning back into that divine 
embrace, feeling like you're relaxing because you're knowing that you are held, you are connected, just resting into God, feeling completely held, contained, a sense of inner, innerness, and a great kind of feeling of support. And let's take a moment just to relax into that place. And, uh, and see if you can feel both at once, just to feel in the body, feel that great expansiveness and that great support in one, in one moment. So this, this time of Sukkot, it's, it, it really is living at the edge, you know, um, it's living with a sense of vulnerability. And uh, I remember um, I had this experience once of teaching uh, a retreat at Omega that was about, that was called the, the de a devotional life uh, the, the path of devotion, it was called. And there were people from different religions all coming together. And it was very liberating for me to, you know, to sort of explore these devotional practices in the context of different traditions and feel like we were, in a sense, a tribe of devotionals, you know, of lovers. And, uh, and we could relax into that sense, uh, whereas maybe for a lot of the people there, they said, well, the people in my own tradition aren't as welcoming to me as the people here in this, you know, who are all connected in this devotional life. Mm. And um, so I loved that sense of the, of the universality <coughs> and the expansiveness. And then from there, I went right to Eilat Chaim afterwards and taught a Jewish retreat. And at first, I felt kind of, constricted, like, oh, now I'm going to do my own little Jewish thing here, you know, and I was like bummed out at first, you know, and, um, and then I had a vision, and in the vision, I saw my own tradition as a crystal palace, you know, and I looked at Judaism, like, and all of its intricacies of, as, in, of, 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 you know, of its architecture mm -hmm. and beauty. And then I just shifted my eyes just slightly and I could see right through that architecture to the vastness beyond. And, uh, and it, was, it was this realization that like this, my Judaism became kind of like the frame through which I could see that vastness. And that vastness had even more of an impact because of the crystal frame that it, you know, that, that held it. You know. And that's kind of how I want to look at the structures of religion as being, having that transparency that both holds us and allows us to, be, to, to like see right through or be a kind of like a God window mm -hmm. that we could go to the place beyond concept through it, you know. So, um, so I think the sukkah has that same quality, you know, because the, what, one of one of the things that makes it a sukkah is that if you look up, you should you, you have to be able to see the stars through it, you know, to be able to see the vast sky through this this beautiful fragile structure that we've built, and it's tem it's temporary. And uh, it's fragile, uh, but it shows us the sky, really. Like, I could go out and look at the sky, but if I'm in my sukkah looking at the sky, um, it's as mm -hmm. if I'm being, I'm, I'm being guided in some way 
to see right through my tradition to the place beyond. I see it's kind of between the worlds too. You're not you're not inside, you're not outside, you're between right, between right, the worlds. Right. Right. Yeah. So you know, so and it's sort of like showing you a truth that, you know, that's what our lives are real are really and we kinda of pretend like we know what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to bring um a prayer that is said, uh, I, I can connect it with the practice of the lulav and the atrag mm. of, of the, and, uh, and th these are words from Psalm 118, and, um, and they're said, <coughs> and especially sung on, on Sukkot, and uh, it says, Anaya hoshiana, Anaya hatslichana, and these are the, you know, the, the um the time when the rains begin and uh and we are tuning into new life and i, I translated this anaya um in this way that was influenced by uh rabbi Raphael hirsch who looked at that word hoshia and somehow said that the that the that the root of it was yesh which is existence itself, mm -hmm. really, and so and he and he so he translated it as, "Please God, grant us new life," and I thought that was brilliant. You know, mm -hmm. instead of save us, it's like it has that mm -hmm. word inside it of yesh of, of 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 being itself, and so um, so I um, I think of this. Not just as a request, but as an acknowledgement of what's happening already. You know, please God, make me aware of this gift of new life that is happening, and of this flow of abundance that is happening uh, right now. And um, you know, and imagine like with the, your lulav and etrag, you know calling in all of the winds of life, you know, from all directions to come to converge inside your sukha. Um, and um, knowing that, um, I don't know, that you're ultimately you are protected, even though this is such a fragile thing, this, <coughs> this life. So that's that's how, I, how it feels like. So everybody, now I know that Renat is in her sukkah. Anybody else in us, yeah. in their sukkah? Okay, we're gonna all pretend we're in our sukkah. Or we're in there with Renat. We'll all get, we'll, we'll get oh, in there with oh, you. Oh, we'll be at Ushbizim, <laughs> Ushbizim. Oh, yes. We're gonna come into your sukkah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. We had a rainbow in our sukkah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, so, <laughs> so let's, um, Let's, in in our sukkah, let's let's call in all this of all of this new life of this new year. Anaya, Hoshiana, Anaya, Hatzlichana, Anaya, Hoshiana.
Anaya, 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 Oshiana, Anaya, 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 Atsrikana, Anaya, Oshiana. to the gifts of life and a generosity to extend that those gifts out into the world so with each in breath you are receiving that that new life and with each out breath you are manifesting that this uh, beauty friendship love connection So, I want to um, do one more practice together, and uh, this last practice, it, it says to turn your hope to God, and um, this word, you know, kaveh elia, and this is, you know, the end of, uh, of Psalm 27. And this word kaveh, it has, it has in it the word the kav, which is there's a, lo- there's a line, right, connecting me and that, you know, that mystery, kaveh elia. And, um, and just recently I heard it 
translated as uh, as incline yourself towards God. That, you know, it's like I'm turning, I'm turning towards that mystery, and it becomes a kind of like a, just my stance of life, really, to be turned towards the beyond. You know, um, towards those that those hills of spices, towards that freedom. So turn, um, so it's like kaveh and ya, and then in order to do that, I need to, uh, I need to be strong and filled with courage, because sometimes, in the face of the unknown, I freak out, I freak out, you know, or the uh, the strange weather that happens, you know, kind of is sort of startling, and you know, the storms. That that uh, you know that kind of knock our sukkah down, so we want to be able to chazak, uh, you know, to bring that strength into our hearts, and that word for courage, both in English and and here in Hebrew, uh, it really has to do with filling up the hearts. Mm-hmm. Um, so the the. The French, yeah. that's the heart. So, so be sort of sort of saying like I want to, I want to live from the heart. I want to be heartful, and uh, and from that place of the heart's fullness, I'm going to turn. I'm going to incline towards that mystery, um, and uh, and that's going to be you know my my stance really in life and i see marla's in her sukkah Yay. too so we're coming in. we're coming in we're going to be guests there too <laughs> so um so i wanted to end with this with this chant um let's see this is with an f an f and a c in case you're shooting wendy wendy's got a shooty there <laughs> so um, and so we can make it as like um, a chant that is like sh- is like showing up a commitment, <coughs> strengthening our commitment to be able to take that stance, even when these storms are blowing our sukkah apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we cave, cave, incline yourself towards that. Words God. Come. Yeah.
consuming with you mm-hmm. and um, if you would like to go to the website you'll see that on next Monday I am there oh, is a, yes. a, a, a app launch for love at the center mm-hmm. so you want to just go to the website and sign up it's not this zoom room it is an a different zoom room that uh, that you sign into so you have to sign up for that, and we'll be introducing yeah. this uh, this new app, and you can download the app now to, yeah, to, love to have it, Love at the Center app. Yeah, it's an amazing app. Yeah. It's got so, so, many, <laughs> so many resources. 